My name is Dominic Budzik. You're officially tuned in to the Tennis and Bodybuilding YouTube channel. Today I will be doing an instructional video on how to hit the most important shot in tennis. And that shot is the serve. Basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to divide this video into two different segments. The first segment is going to be all about the ball toss. The second segment is going to be about the motion and making contact with the ball. Now. Uh, if you're a beginner watching this, if I were to make you guess which segment you think is more important, you'd probably think that it's the motion, but uh, it's actually the ball toss. And the reason I bring this up is because it's important to know why. The easiest way for me to explain it is to make a reference to baseball. So in baseball, you have a batter and a pitcher. The pitcher has a strike zone to throw into. If the pitcher does not successfully throw the ball inside the strike zone. Is the batter going to swing at it? No. If we connect it back to tennis, in tennis, one thing you'll notice in all my instructional videos, every single shot in tennis has its own unique strike zone. And what makes a serve especially unique is the fact that it's the only shot in tennis that you have 100% control over. So you are in charge of tossing the ball into your own strike zone. So that's why it's so important. So let's get started, shall we? Uh, the ball toss, there's three important things to understand about it. Number one is the height, and this part is really simple. All you do for uh, seeing how high you need to toss is raise your racket up as high as you can reach it, and what you're gonna do is toss the ball six to 12 inches above your racket, okay? And then just, so this should be, yeah, it's about a foot, okay? That's a little less, that was probably closer to half a foot. That's how high you need to toss the ball. The reason you want it above your racket and not right at your rack is because you need time to be able to do your motion. The second thing you need to understand is the placement of the toss or the direction of the toss. So for that, we actually have a useful little uh, visual aid on the court, it's called the hash mark. So if I'm a right-handed player, I'm gonna want the ball to my right side slightly, though. not too much where I'm reaching, just slightly so that I'm not hitting above my head, okay? So slightly to my right side and also slightly out in front. Right now, I'm standing to the left side of the hash mark and behind the baseline. So let's just say I'm standing in a square and this is gonna be labeled as square number one. This one right here in front of me, this will be square number two, this one, Diagonally across from me is going to be square number three, and then this one right in front of me is square number four. If I'm a right-handed player, to my right side and a little out in front would be square number three, okay? So one thing you need to be careful of if you do decide to uh, use this exercise is don't, uh, like, if I draw a square this big, for example, with some chalk, and the ball could land all the way out here and it'll still be inside the box, it's no good. If you toss too much out in front, what'll happen, like this, what'll happen is you'll reach too much, and when I reach too much, strings will be pointing down. And if my strings are pointing down, then the ball is gonna go into the net, okay? If I'm a left-handed player, you probably figured this out. All I do is stand on the other side of the hash mark and it's gonna go, it's still gonna go in front of me, but it's just gonna go to my left side. All right, so let's go back to the right side. So that's the placement. So now that we know the two parts of the strike zone, how high you need the toss and where you need the toss to go, now's the time to discuss what technique we should use to get the ball in that spot. Let's talk about how we hold the ball. So if I grip the ball like this, I'm in trouble. What you wanna do is you wanna relax your hand and you wanna be able to let the ball roll out of your fingertips, okay? So I read in Tennis Magazine once, uh, this coach described it as holding a baby bird. And when I say baby bird, I mean like, like, like a tiny, weak baby bird. All you need to do is apply the slightest amount of pressure and the bird's not gonna fly away. 
Second thing we need to discuss is the arm motion, okay? So the toss is strictly an arm motion, okay? We're not bending our elbow. It's not a bicep curl, okay? We're not flicking the wrists. It's strictly just an arm movement. So we've gone over that it's an arm motion. We've gone over how to hold the ball. So then the last thing, the third thing, would be the timing. If I let go of the ball too late, somewhere up here above my head, what's gonna happen is it's gonna go behind me. The reason that's bad, if I hit a ball toss that's behind me, and then look where my strings are pointing. They're pointing up, okay? So the ball's gonna go too far. And then the other, we already talked about. Tossing too much out in front, strings would be pointing down. So very slightly to your right side, very slightly out in front. And that is the ball toss. That's the first segment all together. Now's the time to get into the second segment. And that is the motion of the serve and making contact. So we're just gonna go through a simple progression here. The first thing you need to really understand is the correct grip. What you wanna do is use the continental grip. The continental grip, basically what you do is just shake hands with the racket. One of the things beginners tend to do, even if they start with this grip, they'll wanna kinda gravitate towards this kind of grip, okay? A beginner sees a racket and they're like, hey, I could serve, and then they just do it like this, okay? So the problem with this, this pickup grip can't snap my wrist down any further than this. So if you were to get good at this serve, eventually you wouldn't, you would stop getting better because this would be your full motion. Your motion would stop right here. But then if you switch to this grip, the one where you shake hands, it allows you to snap the wrist down all the way. You see that? So now my range of motion increases from this where it just stops, it gets blocked because of my grip. If I shake hands with the racket, now I could snap all the way down. First progression we're gonna go through is the scratch the back, okay? So this is just giving yourself a head start. You need to get used to tossing the ball with the racket in, uh, the racket in your hand and behind your back, okay? So first just start like this. So just hit the ball, hit the ball from that position, okay? The second progression, the second part of the progression you're gonna go through, once you get used to making contact with the ball out in front, is tossing the ball and doing a racket wind up like this, okay? So you need to make sure the two separate, okay? So do this a couple times, like this. So now you're getting used to tossing and bringing the racket back. So then the last part of the progression, you're gonna put it all together. You're gonna to do this, the ball's in the air, wrap it around, scratch the back, okay? And when you scratch the back, one thing to note that's really important, my wrist is pointing down, or my knuckles are pointing out this way. If I turn my wrist out like this, the reason that's bad is because then I'm not getting all the way back. I want to be able to have that racket. I should be able to kind of pat my head. And scratch my head. So then you put it all together like this, wind up, and then hit down. Okay? It looks like it's fast, but it's not going to be fast if you go through the progression first. So my racket's behind my back. I'm just going to practice like this a couple times. Hit the ball down. Okay? Make sure your feet stay behind the line so you don't do a footfall. Second thing, I'm gonna practice this, separating the two, okay? Tossing the ball in my strike zone, racket's going back. Start putting it behind your back each time like this, okay? Make it a progression for yourself. And then finally, start hitting it. Start hitting it and place it in the service box across from you diagonally. 